Hey guys, Zerka here and welcome back to our Mule Career Mode series. And uh, as you may know, it is now the start of our new season. I think this is our is this our third season? No. It's our fourth season. I think this is our fourth season in this uh, actual series. Let me just wait. So we can relegate no. Stayed in the championship, promoted. Yep. It's our fourth season. Had to check there. Anyway. So obviously it's new season, that means it's now transfer time. So we uh, actually we're given it a, tr a 14 million transfer budget and a wage budget of 70,000. I can get my words out there. Um, so now I'm not really sure if I'm going to go out and buy any players because obviously I do need to strengthen my squad here and there but other than that I'm pretty happy with every player that I've got. And also with 14 million I'm not really sure if it's worth actually going out. I'm not really anyone I can get that's crazy with that money. Um, and obviously we, know, we don't know who's going to be coming or going. Uh, we've got an offer here for Piazon from Atletico Madrid for 12.5 million. He's valued at 9.5 so that is above his value. If you look at the top the executive thinks we should sell him between 13 and 16. Regardless of anything I'm not selling Vidal or Piazon because I like them too as a partnership up front. I think it really works for me and uh, I, just, I just don't see a reason as to sell them otherwise, unless I was getting like someone crazy like Ronaldo or Aguero. There's no actual reason to do so. Um, and Obviously unless it's a stupid amount of money. Uh, now, for this episode, some of you guys may enjoy it, some of you guys may not. I need to say gays then. Some of you guys may not, because uh, obviously it's not going to feature any actual game footage, because uh, it's pre-season friendlies and the transfer's time. Uh, so, obviously, that's if that's something you don't actually enjoy it, then you can click off as always, as far as fine. Um, we're looking at our youth squad here, and this Nuno player, the Alfonso Nuno, looks like our most promising player so far in our youth squad. He's currently got an overall rating of between 63 and 67, and has a potential of around 85, or a maximum potential of around 85. Um, so he's the only player that looks like he's actually worth actually taking on board at the moment. Um, uh, we then go and look at the free agents, because you can always find a lot of good uh, quality players in the free agent list. And obviously they're, they're free, so basically if taking them on board isn't really a risk at all, because you can take them on... And you can see that this one's valued at 3.5 million. See, so if I sign him and he's not that good, I can try and actually sell him for the price that he's valued at. Uh, so it's, it's almost a really easy way to make a profit on players. Um, so that could be a good tip for any of you guys who don't actually know already. Just to go out and get a look at free agents and just try and, just try and sign any. Because I think what players have I got free agents? I think that Jake Cryer got was a free agent. He didn't turn out to be that good, to be fair. So I haven't really got any really good examples at the moment to give you, which is a shame. Anyway, regardless, I signed that Nino guy from my youth squad. Uh, it promoted his contract to a professional contract. And I also signed uh, the free agent. He wanted a 10 grand a week uh, actual contract, which I wasn't really expecting from a free agent. But he's 19, he's rated 74, so I had to give it to him. And Because uh, he's obviously going to be a good player if he's already 74 rated at the age of 19. Um, so there you go, successfully uh, managed to sign him. I also went and tried to get this guy here on loan, uh, Juan Pedro Martins da Costa. And also, that other guy that signed a free agent, he has a really long name, so I think we have to shorten his name. I think he has a Miguel in the middle of his name, so I'm just going to call him Miguel from now on, because there's no way that I'm going to have to say that every single time. The same way this guy, I'm just going to call him, like, Da Costa or Costa, because I'm not saying Juan Pedro Martina Da Costa every time, you know? Um, so then we're going to my scouting network, set up a new scouting network, uh, set up a new scouting assignments for my scouts. Uh, first of all, I sent one out uh, to Portugal, and when I say one, you'll see why in a minute. Um, so I sent him out to Portugal. I had a bit of trouble actually finding where Portugal was. For some reason, uh, EA have like labelled it out like Southern Europe and Eastern Europe and Northern Europe. So I don't even know why they did that because like I've never really heard of Southern Europe even existing. Like I don't know why they've actually done that. They might as well have just said Europe, Western Europe and Eastern Europe. But regardless, I sent him out uh, three months to Portugal to try and get some players. Obviously because I am currently the manager of Portugal. Uh, so it's always kind of good to go out and scout and try and get some players in my actual squad that, uh, that are Portuguese. So in the future, maybe I have to get them in my actual squad. I then went out and actually got a new scout. I then got Harry Brown. It's a decision between uh, Harry Brown and Tom Thomas. I went with Harry Brown purely because of the film. Uh, that's a really weird way to choose a scout, I know. But uh, then I chose him for just purely because of the film. And there you can see there, that's just a confirmation of me uh, setting up that scouting assignment. We then got an offer for Toby Alabi from Hibernian. And he's been someone I've been trying to get rid of for ages. And every time uh, he gets in a, like a deal with someone, it just falls through. So I was expecting the same, So, but I obviously just accepted it anyway. Regardless of what money anyone offers me, I'm just going to accept it. I then got an offer for Vidal for 19 million, which is his valuation. But as I said, not going to sell him. And also, as you see there, our executive believes you should sell him between 28 and 35. So it shows how much money he is actually probably worth already. And I, don't, I wouldn't even sell him. If someone offered me 35 million right now, I still wouldn't sell him for that. I just don't think it'd be worth it. Uh, I don't really think I could replace... I don't know. Who could I replace? 35 million, how much... Hmm, I wonder how much you could get certain players for. I don't know if I'd better replace him with someone who's just as good for that price. Just saw that I set up Harry Brown as a scout 
in Brazil. It's got Brazil and Portugal hoping to try and get some of those skillers in. Uh, the four star five. I don't know why. I just assumed that someone from Brazil, you might find them kind of players in Brazil. I don't know if that really is the case. I think it's just a randomly assigned. I don't really think that there's any traits given to certain countries. And as you see there, my deal to sell Alabi actually went through. I also got a, lo uh, a loan offer here from Chester for Anthony Smith, one of my youngsters that's come through. And uh, I, I just went with the option, uh, just to went with the option. I went with the motive of just sending out all my youth players on loan, pretty much because you might as well get them some game time and hopefully they can get uh, improve a lot. So I, I do try and feature some of my youth uh, players in my team, like I bring my substitutes here and there. Uh, but I thought I might as well send them out to some of these like lower sides uh, just so they could uh, have a chance playing first team football all the time and hopefully they can improve drastically because they're getting first team football and hopefully they can be scoring goals or playing really well for that team and uh, hopefully that's, some, that's just my kind of aim I mean this has got players like O'Brien so this is Tim Flown as well and then went and looked at the uh, free agents again and I come across Anthony Moore Taylor who's a CDM and CDM is a place that I kind of need to feel I mean I've got Bitten Court uh, who isn't actually a CDM he's a camp uh, thing but he does play pretty well there and I also have uh, Gabriel who is good but he just, he's just he's maybe he's meant to be a player for the future and he hasn't really like shown that yet he hasn't really shown his potential uh, as you see I transferred this to Fuentes and then got an offer for, from Everton for 900k and I accepted that because he's, he's someone who's he's getting older and I didn't really think I needed, needed him anymore so that's why I sold him, I offloaded him and uh, I'm trying to get some extra money in my transfer budget. I see there I managed to get a contract through to this Anthony Moore Taylor after he rejected that first one. I sent, He basically wanted a better contract because I didn't offer him uh, the squad role and that's always been something that I've done with my contracts. I've never offered the proper squad role and you guys are like just offer him a proper one. It's annoying. I just want yeah, for some reason, EA haven't labelled out as just a first team player. I just want someone who plays in the first team. They haven't got to be like an important player in the first team. Um, anyway, I'm going to look for a new centre back because that is pretty much what we need, to be fair. Just a cover, really. Just someone who's good enough to cover a current centre back. So if one of them gets injured, we haven't really got anyone after selling Fuentes. Um, so I put in an inquiry for this. Uh, I think his name is Jorez Okore or Jorez Okor. Um, I don't know what team that is. I'm going to have to say that. But uh, his stats were just insane. He's 22. He's only he's, he's 22. He's not really, really young, but he's young enough. And uh, they came back with a, an inquiry of 4.8 million. They came back to my inquiry with, with 4.8 million, even though he's valued at eight. And then I offered it, and then they turned around to me and actually said like um, that wasn't good enough. That wasn't what the offer they wanted. They wanted. A, they said they wanted eight million for him. And I'm currently working ahead of what's actually going on the screen. So I just realised that. So anyway. Again, offered more Taylor another contract, and because uh, because I didn't get the squad right. But you see here, look, uh, they wanted an eight million price tag for him, even though they just offered me four point eight million for him. They've now changed their mind and gone, nope, eight million. So I uh, bumped it up to six million in a hope that uh, maybe they would accept it. Trying to do some bit of my uh, wheeler dealing again and hope that I can get some little bargains. Um, I'll see what happens. So I submitted that uh, offer of six million opposed to the eight million they just asked for. Uh, and I thought they might, they just might, I thought there might be a hint of luck that they might accept it. And uh, so I sent that through. And then uh, we go into our first pre season game of the season against Getafe. Uh, and um, as you can see, I was just simmed it. And uh, it's a pretty boring game, to be honest. And uh, they took off. I was sitting there actually, and I was saying, why is this not Fidel for Benzia? And Benzia comes on and scores straight away, so that was just embarrassing for me. And uh, Getafe equalised in the 90th minute, so that was a bit of a bad game, to be honest. Uh, Gabriel actually got injured in training uh, not too long after that game, uh, so he's now out. So obviously signing that CDM will be very important for me, so that kind of ups the ante of wanting to sign uh, that, is his, was it Moore Taylor his name is? That ups the ante of me wanting to sign him because I do need a CDM, uh, like definitely. Again, looking at our youth squad, seeing the updates uh, he's given me from the, see the improvements they've done over the past month. Not really a noticeable improvement or any players that are actually standing out at the moment, so I probably will end up offloading a lot of these players because they don't seem to be coming through as really good players. So as you see here, uh, I upped the ante and I, I upgraded him to a... I can't remember what I actually offered him. I think I offered him a squad rotation player. Yeah, I offered him a squad rotation player, uh, which is essentially what he's going to be anyway. Um... I then uh, they got a re reply for my offer of six million for a core rate, and they rejected that, so I bumped it up to seven million. Just in the hope they would set that one as well instead of the eight million. Uh, so we'll see if they come back to us and give us what we want. Uh, but that is the end of today's episode. I feel like today's episode has been a really like hesitant commentary. I don't know why. I feel like I, I stumbled on my words a lot. So apologies if that was the case. Um, it won't happen next time. I just don't know why. Sometimes, sometimes you lay down. Sometimes you can lay down a con perfectly in the first time, and sometimes you're a bit hesitant of your words, and some words don't come out properly. 
Uh, but regardless, uh, on the screen now is a link to a Trials HD video that I did with KSI and Calyx. Uh, so you can click that and that is a link be linked directly to that video. And you can also go and check out my Zerka Plays channel on the right hand side, which will be vid more videos like that Trials HD video uh, in the near future. It's kind of a thing that I'm going to start working on soon. Uh, so if you want to subscribe to that channel, then please do. And I shall see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.